How many of you want to do family medicine? How many of you want to do internal medicine? If you want to do family medicine, type FM down below. If you want to do internal medicine, type IM down below. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between internal medicine and family medicine. And speaking to some of my clients, speaking to other people, I kind of got the gist that people didn't truly get the difference between the two. There was a divorce between the specialty that they wanted to get into and where they saw themselves 10 years down the line. That is what kind of job they saw themselves doing 10 years down the line. As such, I decided I want to do a video so that you, you guys can get to know a difference between family medicine and internal medicine. So most, a lot of you guys already know the differences. If you already know the differences, you don't have to watch this, but if you feel like it will help you, go ahead and watch this video. Now, I was in the exact same shoes when it came when it came to 2017 match. I I had to figure out which specialty that I wanted to get into. Now, I had done a whole bunch of thinking, followed by, followed my path to figure out which specialty I wanted to get into, and I've made a video on how you can follow specific steps to get to the ideal specialty for you or your dream specialty. I'm gonna put the link on the right side of the screen at the top. Um, so just, uh, just uh, I would suggest that you watch that video first before you watch this one, so that you can kind of get an idea of how to pick your specialty. So I had narrowed everything down to primary care. Now I had to decide between general medicine and family medicine. It took me a lot of time to figure it out. Once I figured it out, I was very happy with my choice. The choice that I picked was family medicine. Choice for you might be different, based on this video, based on the things that you've thought about. What's up guys, my name is Dr. Safwa Sante. I'm the successful IMG, successful because I matched, and I'm here so that you can as well. This video will be divided into the origin, the patient demographics, the specialties that you can do fellowships in, the jobs that you can do, and the salary that you get. I'm gonna put the timestamps down below as usual, so if you want to jump around, you can jump around the video. Before we go on, I still have some slots available for my mentorship program. In my mentorship program, I help you match using the method that I used to get myself to match in 2017. If you applied once, you didn't make it, you applied twice, you didn't make it, shoot me an email or shoot me a DM so that we can talk. I also have some slots available for my interview prep program. So if you want to ace your interview, you want to do well in your interview, if you applied before, you got interviews and you didn't do well in your interview and you need to make sure you do well in your interviews, contact me. Like I said, I'm gonna put my Instagram ID down below, my email address down below. So just contact me either by DM or by email, whichever way you want. Family medicine as a specialty originated in the 1960s. It originated from the general practitioner movement when they, when they felt that the numerous medical specialties that were popping up around that time were taking away general practitioners, so general practitioners becoming, were becoming less and less. In addition to that, there were a lot of medical advances during that time, and the breadth of knowledge was too much for them to take in with four years of medical school and one year of internship, which is what they used to do before they would, they would go out and practice. So they felt that they needed a little bit more. So currently, family medicine residency programs last three years. Very few of them last four years as well. Internal medicine, on the other hand, originated in the 1800s. So it originated some, some ways back. So internal medicine married the specialization of internal diseases with scientific knowledge and investigation. So before the 19th century, which is the 1800s, around the 1600s, 17th century basically, people were focusing mainly on clinical medicine, which is just at the bedside, um, history, physical, and just trying to understand what it is that had a history and physical and just trying to understand uh, disease pathologies from that standpoint. And after that, in the 1700s, 18th century, there was a study of pathology, there was a study of anatomy with 
human dissections and so on going on, and then increase in laboratory studies. So in the, in the 1800s, the 19th century, eventually the, the clinical aspect, which is like the bedside, bedside medicine was married with the scientific aspect, the pathology anatomy and the uh, laboratory studies to come up with a science. And that science was called internal medicine. Internal medicine residency lasts three years. And after that, you can go ahead and work or you can work in different specialties, just like in family medicine as well. Family medicine as a specialty focuses on providing comprehensive medical care to the whole family unit. The whole family unit includes children, adults, obstetric patients, gynecological patients, and you perform basic gynecological procedures, basic obstetric procedures, and uh, also you see uh, psychiatric patients, you also see some surgical pa patients where you perform minor surgical procedures, depending on where you are in the country and what you're allowed to do. Internal medicine, on the other hand, focuses on adults. And adults are patients that are 18 years and older. The training focuses on the different internal disease pathologies and the different specialties that they can go into afterwards. So it focuses on cardiology, focuses on gastroenterology, uh, rheumatology, and, uh, rheumatology, hematology and oncology, pulmonary, critical care. So you, you have a lot of training in ICU, you have a lot of training on the floors, you have some training outside, uh, and same with family medicine as well. So now you finish your internal medicine residency. You finish your family medicine residency, what are you gonna do? Uh, you have available to you, either you go to work or you do a subspecialty as a fellowship. Um, each of these residency programs have Attach subspecialties, which you can't necessarily do when you're in the other when when you graduated from one. So family medicine has a some ACGME approved subspecialties and some which are not. Together there are a lot of them, but there are only a few ones which are ACGME approved. What that means is you you can use those or they're accepted as valid in any, any hospital. The ones which are not ACGME approved. Might not, be, might not be approved in certain areas or certain hospitals. So the ACGME approved specialties in family medicine are seven. There's sleep medicine, there's sports medicine, there's pain management, there's hospice and palliative care, there is geriatrics, there is adolescent medicine, and the cool one, which I just found out, is clinical informatics. I didn't know about this when I was applying but there's clinical informatics, and that's basically a marrying of medicine that we have right now with technology so that you can provide the best care. And I think that's so freaking cool. So those are the ACGME approved fellowships that are attached to family medicine. Now the ones which are not ACGME approved and might be at some point, I don't know, um, this emergency medicine, urgent care, women's studies, rural medicine, community medicine, hospitalist. So there's a whole bunch of them. Now, hospitalist, emergency medicine, not ACGME approved for family medicine doctors. Um, but you can work in a lot of hospitals as a family medicine doctor. And I have a lot of friends that are working all over the place as family medicine doctors as, and function as hospitalists in different areas but there's some hospitals that will not accept that and only accept only internal medicine physicians. The same with EM. If you go to the rural areas, you go to the Midwest, you can work emergency medicine. In some places in New York, you can also work emergency medicine, but you can't work emergency medicine in other places because you want emergency medicine trained doctors. So that's the difference. Okay, some other um, uh, non-ACGME approved programs, uh, faculty development, healthcare policy, um, HIV, integra integ integrative medicine, internal health, maternity and obstetrics, 
research substance abuse, and I already said woman health. So there's a lot of subspecialties associated with family medicine, but a few of them are ACGME approved. Now, with internal medicine, on the other hand, you have quite a few specialties that can earn you a lot of money, which is why a lot of people like uh, internal medicine. So internal medicine, you can get you can get into allergy and immunology, you can get into pulmonary uh, disease, you can get into cardiology, you can get into gastroenterology, you can get into hematology, you can get into oncology, you can get into rheumatology and infectious disease. So you have a whole bunch of them. So you finish your family medicine residency program, you finish your internal medicine residency program and you're gonna work. Or you finish your subspecialty fellowships and you're gonna work. So now you think that you cool because you're gonna be making attendant money. So how much are you making? As a family medicine doctor, this is the data from Medscape Physician Compensation from 2020, even with all with COVID and everything that was going on. Family medicine doctors on average were making 234,000. Internal medicine doctors on average were making $259,000. And with cardiology, you're making about 430,000. With gastroenterology, which is also linked to IM, you're making 419,000. Now, these are all averages. When I got to my second year of family medicine, you start to, I started to get all these emails from uh, recruiters and the salaries that were coming across my desk were ranging all the way from as low as like $190,000 with a lot of good benefits to as high as $400,000 and above. But the higher the amount of money that you're making, it's either you're going to like a more rural area or you, you're taking on extra duties and you're working extra shifts or extra things. So yeah, you might be working in the Midwest, doing everything, including obstetrics, delivery, surgical procedures, and so on. In, in that case, you might be making like 400000 and so on. In other places, you might be doing everything and you might not be making that. You might not be making that much. But on the most amount of people, the most amount of offers that I got were in the range of 200000 And this is the same that's going to be for internal medicine. Guess what I forgot to tell you guys to do? But I know you guys are awesome, so you probably already did it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that anytime I release a video, you guys will be the first per people to know. I hope this video was helpful and kind of gave you guys a leg up in, diff in choosing between family medicine and internal medicine, if that those are the specialties that you are thinking about. If you're not thinking about those specialties or you haven't even gotten to that stage, just watch the video that I made on picking ideal or dream uh, specialty. And it will go through different things that you can do to help you arrive at that decision. Other than that, uh, we'll see you at the next video. The next video will be released on Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning as always. And we'll see you then. Dr. Safwa Sante, out.